Hello, and we are back. We're looking at the normal distribution, also known as the bell curve. So, as you can see, the normal distribution here uh, looks like a bell curve. A lot of times when you take a bunch of data, there's of course going to be a mean, but the rest of the data falls evenly on either side of the mean, and the further away from the mean it is, the less of it is. So for example, the height of trees in a park normally distributed with a mean of 10 meters and a standard deviation of 3 meters. Okay, so we are hopefully going to uh, talk about, or hopefully you already know what standard deviation means, um, and it's a way to represent how distributed the data is. So you can see that standard deviation of 3 meters here, that means that it's, you know, there's more trees that are very tall or very short compared to the mean versus if Sean goes to school and it's normally distributed with a mean of 15 minutes and a standard deviation of one minute that means that since the standard deviation is very low compared to the mean it's a very sort of narrow curve if that makes sense okay now there's a, a symbol here it looks kind of like a U with a line in the front of it it's pronounced mu I believe it's a Greek letter and we use that for mean on your Casio calculator, if that's what you use. Um, a lot of times it shows it as X bar, same, same idea as the mean. Um, and the standard deviation is, uh, standard deviation symbol is that. It's kind of, uh, it's a lowercase sigma, another Greek letter, okay? So we're gonna look at the normal distribution a little bit closer here. Now, if you can see here, here's the, uh, the mean, and then here's one standard deviation away, two standard deviations away, three standard deviations away from the mean, okay? Now you don't necessarily have to memorize these um, percentages, but it's good to know that if you're looking at just within one standard deviation away, both above and below the mean, a little more than two-thirds of the values lie there and within two standard deviations away here you can see that over 95 percent lies within those values okay so for example if we wanted to state the probability of a randomly selected normally distributed value and we wanted to figure out if it lies um, one sigma below the mean and above the mean okay so the probability is going to be that it's within this area. So as it says right here, that's just 68.26%. Okay? And then if we want to figure out what the probability is, that the mean and the value 2 sigma above the mean right there. Okay? See if you can do this one on your own. Uh, go ahead and pause. See if you can figure out what this number is using this diagram. So we want to know what's the probability that it's between the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. Pause the video now. Okay, so if you saw this, you notice that you have this and this. So it's gonna be 47.72%. Okay, so let's try another one that's very similar to this. We scroll down here. The mean average for this place in August is 48 millimeters with a standard deviation of 6 millimeters. Over a 20 year period, how many times would you expect there to be less than 42 millimeters of rainfall? Less than 42. Okay, so we want we may want to draw the curve. Okay. Here's 48. Right? And then standard deviation of 6. So that means that it's going to be 42 and 54. So we want it to be less less than 42. So this area is what we're looking for. It's the probability that it's going to be in that area. Okay? See if you can go up here, take a look at this, pause the video, and figure it out. Okay, so since it's going to be What's the probability that it's less than one standard deviation away? It's going to be this plus this plus this. Okay, 
So this area is going to be 15.87%. That's what's in that area. That's the probability that it's going to be less than 42. Alrighty. So now we're going to learn how to use our calculators. We're going to be using the, uh, the Casio calculator. Now, finding the probability that a randomly selected data point is within a range is what we're looking for, okay? So, this is the problem. X is a random variable that is distributed normally with a mean of 10, standard deviation of 2.3. What's the probability that a randomly selected data point is between 8 and 11? And this, I already drew a graph just so you could see it a little easier, okay? So I drew that graph, and now we're going to learn how to enter it into the calculator. Okay, what we do is we go to the stats menu, press F5 for distribution, F1 for norm, and then F2 for NCD, and then we enter the data. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so hold on one sec, let me adjust the screen. Okay, so from the stats menu, what you're going to do is you're going to click on distribute and then norm. You have to do NCD here. Now we're going to put in our data, okay? So we want to be between 8 and 11. So I'm going to put 8. Oops, messed up there. Hold on. I'm going to put 8 and then 11. And then notice that my standard deviation is 2.3. You see that that's lowercase sigma. And then this is the mean, so that's uh. lowercase. So here's our lowercase mu at 10. And then we click exe, and we have the probability is 0.4758. So we're going to write that as 476. Okay, so it is here for 47.6% or 0.476, one of the two, okay? So go ahead and see if you can do the same thing. Or you know what, I'm going to show you because these are two different, a little bit wackier. So this is, what's the probability that it's less than 12? Same mean, same standard deviation. What's the probability that it's less than 12? Okay, so we go back to our calculator, okay, and here less than 12 means the lower is going to be 0, and the upper is going to be 12, okay, and there you can see that it is 80.77, so it's 80.8. That's the probability. And then greater than 9, same idea, but then just like here, the lower one was 0. Here, the upper one is going to be something really big. So I'm going to show you how to enter that, okay? So the original thing over here was greater than 9. So it's going to be the lower is 9. The upper is going to be something really big. We're going to do 1 times... 10 to the 99th power. That's a huge number, so that should work for us. And then P is going to be 66.81, so it's going to be 66.8. Okay, 66.8%. You can also write it, of course, as 0.668. Alrighty. Okay, so now I want you to read this one and see if you can do it on your own. Okay, so go ahead and read this and pause the video. See if you can do this one on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, so you should have entered this into your Casio, lower, upper, sigma, and mu. And if you click EXE, you get 37.8%. All righty. 37.8% or 
8. Okay, now that's a lot of what you need to know for IB Mathematical Studies having to do with the normal distribution. There's one other concept, and that has to do with if they give you a percentage, a probability, you need to find a value, kind of the opposite. Okay, so for example, a university professor determines that 80% of his years history candidates should pass the final exam. The exam follows a normally distributed curve, mean is 62, standard deviation is 12, find the lowest score necessary to pass the exam. Okay, so here's the idea. You do the same thing with your calculator with a slight variation. Okay, so you do distribution, so again, menu stat, distribution, norm, but instead of doing NCD, we're doing the inverse of that, inverse N. So you click on inverse N. Okay, now it has tail there. You can see that we want tail to the left. Okay, tail to the left. All right. Now, we're looking at area, and then we're looking at these two. Okay. So I went ahead and entered these values. We want the tail to the left. Area is 0.2, because that's 20%. Um, the standard deviation was 12, and the mean is 62. Okay. So we click EXE there, and we see that it is 51.9. So that means the minimum score would be 51.9 or 52 on the exam. Okay. That's the minimum score. All right. So let's see if you can do this one here. Okay, so go ahead and read this and pause the video, see if you can do that. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so you can see I entered the data. The tail is to the right because it's the top. See that it's the top 7%. Okay, so the tail is to the right. The area is 0 0.07 because that's 7%. Here's my standard deviation and my mean. I click EXE and I got 82.89. 82.89 is 83. Okay, so that's the lowest score to receive an A. Alrighty. Now finally, I want to go through a problem that was on the mock exam that I gave in spring of 2015. Okay. So, real quickly, you can see. Um, we have a normal distribution. Okay, we want to sketch a diagram of the distribution of the weight of the chicken eggs. Okay, and you need to clearly show the boundaries for the classification of eggs. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the diagram right here. Okay, I lied. I'm not going to sketch the diagram. I'm just going to show the answers. Um, so you can see that it's normally distributed. Here's the mean right through the top of the curve. Okay, here are the borders. Right, this was small. Between here and here is medium. This is large, and this is extra large. Okay, those don't necessarily need to be labeled, but you can see the lines between these sections. Okay, and you can see what the scores are for there. Alrighty. Secondly, you can see the probability that an egg is medium or is extra large. Right? You uh, you have to enter the information from the problem, standard deviation, and mean, and use your calculator to figure that out just like I showed you before. All right? And then finally, we have the probability is 0.3 that a randomly chosen egg weighs more than W grams, and you need to find W, right? So that's just like the second type of thing I showed you with the calculator, where you have to find how, um, find a value given a specific probability. All right? And of course, this next problem, we have the probability that it produces a large egg is 0 0.121, produces 2,000 eggs per month, with the number of large eggs produced as an estimate, and just multiply this times this, no big deal. And then finally, given this information, and given the probability given here, estimate the monthly income earned by selling those 2,000 eggs. And then you also always want to uh, follow directions in terms of how